Another defensive prospect locked in by the Minnesota Wild as Jack Peart signs his ELC. We'll look at his timeline on today's episode of Locked on Wild. Your Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDON for $20 off your first purchase. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, we'll discuss the news that defenseman Jack Peart has signed his ELC with the Minnesota Wild. We'll take a look at what it means for him this year, as well as the timetable moving forward and how he fits in amongst the rest of the defensive prospects. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, and the news officially official, as Michael Russo teased it yesterday, the Minnesota Wild announcing that they have signed Jack Peart to his ELC here today um no surprise that it happened uh very quickly after the saint cloud state men's hockey team saw their season come to an end uh from the release from the minnesota wilds uh, minnesota wild president of hockey operations and general manager bill garen today announced the national hockey league club has signed defenseman jack peart to a three-year entry-level contract starting with the 2024-2025 season Peart, who is 20, skated in 38 games for St. Cloud State this season, recording 14 points, three goals and 11 assists, 65 shots on goal, 11, uh, 18 penalty minutes, and 49 blocked shots. The six foot, 195 pound native of Grand Rapids, Minnesota, ranked third among team defensemen in points, goals, and assists this season. Peart played in 108 games for St. Cloud State over a span of three years, 2021 to 2024, recording 55 points, eight goals, 47 assists, 64 penalty minutes, 147 shots, 113 block shots, and a plus 15 rating. Peart set career highs in points of 24 during the 2022-2023 season. He skated for the U.S. National Junior Team at the 2022 and 2023 IIHF World Junior Championships, collecting five points and a plus three rating in 11 games and won a bronze medal in 2023. Peart was named the 2021 Mr. Hockey Award winner and also won the Reed Larson Award given to the state's top senior boys hockey uh, high school defenseman. The Wild selected Peart in the second round 54th overall of the 2021 NHL draft uh, from elite prospects in just looking at what Peart brings to the table. He skates with a heightened activity rate through his feet and uses crossovers to cut laterally and quickly close space while defending in transition. He keeps his feet stable through the neutral zone. Once he's established a gap with the closing opponent, Peart shoulder checks for options as he collects the puck, layers deception onto his first touch, and sprints right past the first four checker with ease. So the thing that jumps out at me right off the bat about Jack Peart is that he is a uh, very fluid skater. He's a strong skater, and uh, you can never have enough smooth skating defensemen um, in your midst. Uh, Dauber Prospects had this to say about Jack Peart. Peart is a strong skater who puts his quick feet to use to generate speed through crossovers. He defends well, using his stick and body positioning to keep attackers at bay while scanning for threats in the defensive zone. Peart is adept at keeping the play to the outside and cutting off lanes in the middle of his own zone. He is strong on puck retrievals, utilizing shoulder checks to identify his options on the breakout before hitting a teammate with a quick and accurate feed. There's a lot to like about Peart's game, and he has all the makings of a modern 
day two way defender in the NHL. That from Nick Richard of Dauber Prospects. Now, obviously, there was a little bit of a dip in performance from last year to this year, but, and this is something that I have not as of yet been able to find, but I do believe it was because he took on more defensive responsibilities this season um, than he had last year. He was consistently playing this year second pairing minutes for St. Cloud State. And, you know, as a, I think what the Wild are trying to really get put together here is defensemen who have a real strong defensive foothold and the opportunity to build their offensive game to complement it. I think you've seen it with Brock Faber. Strong skater, good defensive instincts, and we've seen him be able to add some offense to his repertoire throughout the season to really complement that strong defensive game. The Wild are hoping that Jack Peart can do the exact same thing here, and that's not a bad base if you're uh, you're building a um, if you're building a group of defensive prospects to just have a bunch of fluid skaters out there that can move the puck and can uh, prevent you from getting locked in your defensive zone. Um, some of the other things that stood out about um, Peart's season this year, he was named second team all NCHC uh, here this season. So obviously getting some accolades for his performance. Um a career best in blocks uh, and his uh, 46 at the time blocks ranked 10th in the NCHC. And he recorded multiple blocks in 13 games this season, including a season high four at Minnesota state on October 14th and Minnesota Duluth on March 8th. Peart also had a season best three points with one goal and two assists at Miami on February 9th in a five to two victory. So, he is not afraid to get dirty. He's not afraid to uh, to throw his body on the line to uh, to block shots. He uh, he impacts the game that way as well. And so, you know, defensive defensive um, ability to really help impact the play on that side of the puck. Obviously, the his his offense will grow. That that's the area where he I think needs the most work, but. You can't really like if you can get guys that have that skating um, acumen to their game, that stuff's hard to teach. So I am glad that the Wilds are trying to quickly get these guys signed so that they can get them into the system. Now, as far as what this means for Peart for the rest of this year, turns out we could see him in Iowa a little quicker than um, you may have thought. And so we'll take a look at the timeline. We'll take a look at the timetable and where Peart slots in amongst the rest of the Minnesota Wild defensive prospects. All that coming up as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Sleeper. And with the final month of the regular season here, whether your team is fighting for a postseason spot or is in the postseason comfortably and just waiting to see who they play once the postseason begins, you can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether your favorite players will record more or less than their sleeper projections in eight player stat categories. You can win 100 times your bet by playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention, nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKEDONNHL. 
See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For those of you that love sports talk, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you have to turn the volume down with all of the back and forth shouting they do? Make the switch to Locked on Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked on Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So talking about Jack Peart signing his ELC, and uh, will he join the, uh, the Minnesota Wild organization here at the end of this season? Well, turns out, That is the likely spot in which he will go. As uh, Michael Russo notes in his write-up for today's news, Pierce will likely start in the AHL next season and will join a prospect pool that includes Damon Hunt, Carson Lambos, Ryan O'Rourke, David Spachek, and Kyle Masters. Um. He is expected to sign an amateur tryout to play for Iowa for the rest of the season and could report to Des Moines as early as Tuesday. Peart, who is 20, could have returned to St. Cloud State for his senior season, but chose to turn pro after St. Cloud State's season ended in overtime against the University of Denver on Friday. So they're going to get him going very, very quickly. Uh, to uh, try to get him acclimated here the rest of this season with the struggles that the Iowa Wild have had pretty much all year. Um, he's going to be able to slot right in and uh, and get some experience and uh, get an idea as to what playing at the AHL level is like, trying to handle that jump from collegiate to AHL life. Uh, that is going to be what his goal is here for the last month or so of the season. Uh, I want to talk about some uh, comments from Wild Assistant Director of Player Development, Matt Hendricks. Um, This, again, was in Michael Russo's write-up, but kind of caught my eye here in regards to Peer. His numbers dipped this season, but there's a lot more to look at in a player's game than stats. The growth that he's shown on the defensive side of things has jumped off the page this year. He has begun to really, really trust his feet defensively. He's got an ability to battle in corners and to hold his ground net front. Those are the things that will allow him to find success at the next level. The offensive numbers, we think he'll rebound from that eventually. But Jack is a tremendous player in terms of the way he sees the game, thinks the game, and plays the game. I like the fact that they pointed out specifically his play around the net front, because what did we talk about with Isha um, last week is how much the Wild have struggled at keeping that part of the front of the net clean. And so if that's something that he has shown the ability to uh, to help out in, there's going to be a spot for him when he is ready. Uh, as far as the uh, the rest of the Iowa prospect pool goes, um, you've got, as mentioned, Kyle Masters, Carson Lambos, David Spachek, Ryan O'Rourke, Simon Johansson, Damon Hunt, all, with the exception of Simon Johansson, all 21 years old or younger. And so, yes, it has been frustrating to not see signs from those guys like masters like lambos like rhino rourke uh but you look at the ages too they're all 20 or 21 and so there's something to be said about having a get your feet wet season now they may not they may not profile as top pairing defensemen But what this does for the Minnesota Wilds is it allows you the opportunity to have 
a bunch of different options that can play in particular spots in the lineup and can also fill in if particular players in your system or within your your decor get hurt. We saw that uh, play out pretty painfully this season for the Minnesota Wild is a bunch of defensemen were hurt at various points throughout the season. And you had Damon Hunt, who was really the only one that was ready to be able to step up and uh, and fill some of that time. And so more seasoning for these players like Masters, like Lambos, like Spacek, O'Rourke. They all will be looking to rebound after um, not the greatest of seasons here. And you you throw Peart into that, and he just is another young defenseman. And so there are going to be there are going to be growing pains with everybody in that grouping, which is why I think we've seen much to our dislike. I think that's why we've seen the Wilds try to fill that decor as much as they have because those guys just need more time to really start to show the signs that they're ready to hit the NHL level. Not everybody is going to be able to step in as quickly as Brock Faber did. Not everybody is going to be able to just hit the ground running. And um, th- there is something to be said about players taking time to develop those skills to uh, to be put in positions to succeed. Now, it's a fair question to ask, and I've brought this point up before. It's a fair question to ask if your prospects at Iowa are getting proper development, uh, if they are being guided along the path the right way to where they can you know, fully develop and turn into solid defensemen at the NHL level. That is the hope. And, you know, I think that has been hit or miss so far this season, to say the least. And so this is, it is honestly just a little bit surprising to me how you've seen this all the way from the top down through to the other levels of the organization that there just has been a lot of inconsistency from the prospect level all the way up to the NHL team. And so I hope that the organization takes the time this off season to really try to get all the messaging to line up, try to get everything to be in sync in unity from the bottom down to the Iowa Heartlanders, all the way up to the Minnesota Wild, so that you can reinforce that and you can be teaching guys, here's what we need you to be doing. You'd think that's that's what's going on already, but um, it just would be nice to see like a concrete plan of here are the things that we'd like you to work on. Here are the positions that we're going to put you in to be able to further that development. And then when you're ready, you're going to get your opportunity to uh, to try to crack it at the NHL level. Now, all of those prospects, not all of them are going to pan out in the way that we had hoped, but you would like to believe that between Masters, between Lambos, between Spacek, between O'Rourke, Johansson, Damon Hunt, and Jack Peart, you would love to believe that at the least you can find some guys for the second and third pairing, and maybe somebody lights it up and really takes off to be able to be paired with um, Brock Faber at some point down the line. But I think what we are seeing further enforces a fact that uh, hopefully we will be able to take advantage of this season, which is the fact that it feels like the Minnesota Wild need to invest some draft capital on the defensive side of the puck. And so we will discuss that very notion as we finish today's episode of Locked on Wild after this.
final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Uh, once again, make sure to subscribe on YouTube. Make sure to hit that like button if you are viewing today's episode on YouTube. And uh, make sure to give us a five-star review if you are one of our loyal audio listeners. We appreciate you wherever you are turning in, uh, tuning in, whether it be uh, listening in the car, on uh, on your lunch break, or uh, if you've got us on in a Bluetooth speaker. I did that the other day. Just had a Bluetooth speaker on in my apartment while I was doing some cleaning, just uh, just listening to a couple of other lockdown shows. So there are plenty of ways to listen. We appreciate which ever option you choose to be part of the Lockdown Wild community. It seems more and more like the Wild need to invest some capital into a defenseman with this draft. And as they currently sit at 14 in the um, latest Tankathon standings, the uh, latest mock draft has the Wild taking Right wing Liam Greentree of the OHL, who uh, put together a 90 point campaign in 64 games with 36 goals and 54 assists. But you look at some of these other defensive prospects that are at or around the uh, the top 10 um, in this Tankathon mock draft. The New Jersey Devils currently selecting Carter Yakumchuk. Um, at number 12 of uh, the WHL, he had as a defenseman 30 goals and 41 assists, 71 points at the uh, WHL level. He's 6'3", 194 right now. Um, other right-handed defensemen that uh, that are in the, uh, the top 10 or around it, uh, pick number 11, Zane Parikh of Saginaw of the OHL 33 goals 63 assists a 96 point campaign for a defenseman he is 6 foot 181 uh Zeev Byam 5'11 165 playing for Denver 11 goals 37 assists 48 points in 38 games um for Denver this season Sam Dickinson, if we go all the way up to seven, currently being uh, mocked to the Ottawa Senators at seven, six three one ninety four. He had um, eighteen goals, fifty two assists, seventy points in sixty eight games uh, for London in the OHL. Anton Siliev, just because of the numbers, is the one that is drawing my attention the most. Six foot seven. 207. He had three goals, eight assists, 11 points in 63 games with Torpedo of the KHL. Those are your main ones. I mean, if you go farther up, RDM Levshinov of Michigan State, six foot two. He had nine goals, 25 assists, 34 points in 36 games. For Michigan State this year, but he is currently pegged to go third overall to the Anaheim Ducks. So that's probably a little too high. But if the Wild are going to be right at about fifth, 14, um, it could be that Yakumchuk drops, or it could be that you're looking at a player such as uh, Adam Juracek of uh, HC Pilsen of the Czech League. He had one point in 19 games, but he's 6'2", 176. Now, one thing that I do want to talk about that uh, the Tankathon uses, and uh, this is a number that I was not super familiar with before this point. It's what is called NHLE. It is a metric used to determine, uh, to predict NHL points over 82 games based on a player's performance in specific leagues. Points per game times a translation factor um, and then uh, multiply it out to an 82 game schedule. So let's look at what some of these defensemen that are pegged in the first round. Let's see where they stand. Levshinov 
has an NHL E of 25.8. So he is predicted to be about a 26 point defenseman. Points aren't points aren't the only thing for defensemen. You'd love to have some defensemen that can actually play defense, but it does help. It does help having defensemen that are capable of moving the puck and stepping up defensively when, or stepping up offensively when needed. Uh, Anton Siliev, six foot seven, two Oh seven. I'll just throw that out there again. Uh, his NHLE is 11.5. So predicted to be about a 12 point player when he gets to the NHL, um, Sam Dickinson of London in the OHL, his NHL is 27.3. Zeev Byam of Denver currently mocked to the Pittsburgh Penguins at nine. His NHL is 45 and a half. A 46 points per season defenseman. That is, that is appealing especially if he's got even a hint of defensive ability to his game. That's super appealing. Uh, Zane Parikh, his NHL is 38 and a half. So around a 40 point per game or per, per season defenseman. That also intrigues me. Carter Yakimchuk, his NHL is 26.6. But again, some of these other guys too, like 6-3, 6-2 is intriguing. Uh, some guys that have a little size to their game because um, I saw on Twitter the other day, and I was going to dig into this for a future episode, but there were some discussions about the fact that size is starting to creep its way back in. And what a shock. Minnesota Wild currently are one of the most undersized teams in the league. One of the smallest teams in the NHL. Uh, I believe that was on our Discord server, actually, that that was shared. I'll have to go back and uh, take a peek, but um, and it, it, especially, especially on the blue line. Like, if we look at who is currently occupying those spots, you've got Brock Faber, who is, I mean... It it's not an it it's not a knock on him. He's six foot one ninety. The guys that you have that currently have quote unquote size on your blue line are Zach Bogosian, who is six three two twenty six, and Jake Middleton, who is six three two ten. That's basically it on your blue line. And so if you can get some height while also getting the good abilities, skating and puck handling, and otherwise. That is surely appear, appealing to me, but you know, it, Steve Byam. I mean, not even having really looked into what he brings to the table, just the fact that he has potential to be like a forty point per year defenseman is just like of all the players on this list, all these prospects. That's the one that stood out to me the most, and so. If you can add a player like that to your defensive prospect pool, somebody who vaults up to the top and then can vault up to the top of your uh, blue line um, and be a top pairing guy, that's the next, I think, biggest need for this Minnesota Wild team because Jonas Brodeen is 30. He is signed through 2027, 20, 2028, but Brodeen has started to... He started to rack up some lost games due to injury here over the last couple of seasons. Jared Spurgeon is 34 right now, and there are three seasons left on his deal. And we all know what Spurgeon is is trying to come back from. It's tall odds. He can certainly do it, but it's it's tall odds for him to come back from that type, those types of surgeries. It's not, if it was one, it'd be one thing, but two of them. And beyond that, the wild will be, I'm sure trying to negotiate an extension with Declan Chisholm. 
Brock Faber will be uh, coming due for his. He is a uh, restricted free agent for the 2025-2026 season. So I would imagine there is work already being done, but that one cannot be done until um, I believe this offseason is when that can start to be negotiated. Folks, we are hoping that the uh, next wave of forward prospects will be getting here before too long to help fill some of these spots in the lineup. It's time to turn our attention to the defensive side. And that is my sole focus for this draft is go get a defenseman at the top in round one, please. Because it, it, it you just would feel a lot better about your uh, overall plan on defense if you had another top-end guy that you could definitively point to and say, Yep, that's the one. And again, it's possible that one of these other prospects just lights it up and all of a sudden turns into that type of guy. But it's it, it just would put me at more ease if there were a few, if there was another top end defenseman in this wild prospect system. And so, looking forward to seeing how Jack Peart uh, adjusts to life at the Iowa level here. Um, as soon as today, uh, we'll keep an eye on that and we'll uh, maybe try to check in with him before the uh, the season is over. But that will do it for today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Uh, again, reminder to uh, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the like button. If you are listening on one of your uh, preferred audio platforms, whether it be Apple Podcasts or Spotify, uh, make sure to drop us a uh, a five star review if you enjoy the show. It helps us get further out there to uh, wild fans all over the globe. And make sure to join our Discord server as well. Link is in the description of this episode. Uh, we have new episodes for you every Monday through Friday as part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. So have a great rest of your day, and we will be back with you with a brand new episode of Lockdown Wild tomorrow as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.